Scott from the old curiosity shop welcome back to the kitchen counter and to another thrift haul and yes this is quite an eclectic thrift haul as you see there's no rhyme or reason so <laughs> sometimes it just happens that way but pretty much everything that you see here falls between the years of the late teens uh, into the 1960s so we're not gonna waste any time we're gonna jump right in and see what we've got Yes, today's cup of coffee is missing. That's all right. Uh, as promised, the music we started out with is indeed that recording that I mentioned last time. That's uh, Lawrence Welk and his, not his orchestra, but what he called his Hotsy Totsy Boys. That was recorded in the late 20s and the tune is called Spiked Beer. So we'll start over here on this side first and uh, I guess we'll begin with the Attack of the Roosters. Somebody left the barn door open and actually this is only what's left of it and I actually th I think I, I think he sold last night So he's on his way to Australia, but these four guys here are the only ones left. I started out with oh I don't know about 12 of these guys and As you all remember no kitchen shelf in the 1940s 50s or 60s was complete without a ceramic rooster or hen or chicken or whatever now these I understand the ones with the little holes from what I read anyway uh, those holes were for uh, oh my goodness little uh, hors d'oeuvre spears you know little little wooden uh, picks that you would then like toothpicks but longer so you could pick up hors d'oeuvres that's what I read so we'll just go with that and this, most of these are marked Japan. It's, of course, there's the Napco mark on the bottom. These are selling for five to eight dollars each. Just, just depends. So there are four left and they're in the store right now. If you're interested, go get them. A couple of vintage zippers from the 60s. Those will be up and out for the uh, crafters out there. I love this. Okay. She is, mm, she is ready for that slope. <laughs> you just can't beat the graphics on some of these. Oh, she plays tennis too. Well, she's a modern girl. All right. It was the 60s. Speaking of the 60s, there's a recipe box made in Ohio. It's in fantastic 1960s condition. Bennett, come on now. It has all of its uh, little dividing cards on the inside so you can still put your recipes in there and divide them up and this has no rust or dents on it and it's in really good shape uh, from the 19 come on from the 60s 
Uh, a Lucite hanging pendant lampshade, also a 1960s era piece. Now this is just, uh, this is the random threading or spaghetti string, and it's plastic. It's a plastic sphere with this Lucite stuff on the outside. There's always going to be a couple little breaks or missing spots in that in that Lucite, but let's see if you can get the idea of what it looks like lit up, something like that. So there, there were uh, table lamps that had shades like these, but this was designed to, uh, to actually hang and the light bulb would be right up here. So these cutouts were for the heat of the light bulb to rise out. I don't have the electric cord, uh, which is not really a big deal. And anyone that would be interested in that, they sell those uh, light sockets with the cords and you could just rewire this and have it hanging over your vintage dining room table in a flash. So that's also, I think, in the shop and ready to go if you're interested. Um, these, I think, sell for, depending on the color and the condition, 20 to $30. Then in the back, I have two, well, let's, let's bring these to the front so you can see them better. These aren't bookends. I thought they were at first, but they're not. They're just pieces of art for a shelf. They're nice mid-century uh, carved teak. African inspired heads. See they're not bookends because they're not completely flat on the back. And this is not really strong enough to hold books up. So they would probably go on a, on a shelf like that. Nice three dimensional, good shape. Probably the uh, 60s male and f male there and female there. Okay. And she has an earring. These are really nice. Uh, also, back here, I picked this up. I love this. It's a hammered copper piece also from the 60s, and it has a real sort of Caribbean, West Indies vibe to it. There's no maker's mark on it. And there were probably two or three of these that would hang all, you know, in, on the wall. I don't know what I'm trying to say. There's the hook. And you can see the copper is bent over this backing. Really good shape. Nice looking. I wish I had the, the others in the series, but you know, you take what you can find. Okay, that's cool. The cookie jar back here is, uh, I'll show you the on the bottom in just a second. This is made by Purinton, P-U-R-I-N-T-O-N, uh, Pottery Company. And this was one of their popular designs. They were founded in uh, Westville, Ohio in 1936, and then sometime in the Depression they moved to Pennsylvania. And then uh, during the late 40s and 50s, they started making cookie jars, dinnerware, and such. And then I believe they went out of business in 1959. So this dates from the late 40s through the early 50s, this particular cookie jar in this pattern. Their most famous cookie jar was the head of Howdy Doody. Those are some tiny cookies that you would put in there because maybe it's meant to trap. I mean, I can't even, I can't even get, okay, we won't go any farther than that. There's, uh, I'll let you see the bottom. Slipware. And they made a whole series in this particular pattern. Of jars for your counter flour sugar you know the deal there's a uh, what is that it's called a gravy boat I'll let you see the name on the bottom that's also in the shop I pick up good-looking gravy boats when I can as replacement pieces these baby dishes are from hazel atlas the 19 late 40s 50s it's their opal opal glass not platinite but it is the opal glass, or opaline, or whatever they called it. You can see a little bit of the opalescence through it. Divided baby dishes, it's unmarked, but it's Hazel Atlas. And the farm animals, of course, were designed to keep the child's attention so they would finish their creamed corn. So, we've got everybody here. Pony, duck, I guess they're going for a goat there. That's probably a lamb. 
<clears throat> See how many animals? Rooster? Chicken? Or whatever? Cow, pig, pony, duck, and we're back to the start. And these don't have any chips on them either. These are little paperweights. Uh, I will insert a photograph here showing you what they look like when, when they have pictures in them. They're glass paperweights. They date to around the 20s, before the 20s. Uh, and then, obviously, you can see that the photographs would be uh, affixed in here. And then you turn it upside down and the photograph shows through the glass. So I picked these three up as just blank paperweights. I'm not quite sure what I'm going to do with those yet. This is a Delft shoe, and I'm forgetting to tell you prices, so I will go back and do that. Okay. In fact, let's do that now. The heads were about three dollars, I think, for the for the pair of them. The zippers were fifty cents. This was a dollar. This was two dollars. The roosters were all bundled together, and I think I got the whole. I paid twenty bucks, and I got maybe fifteen or so of those roosters. I paid a little little bit too much for the roosters. But I'm not losing money on them. That hammered copper was, I think, two dollars. I paid about two bucks for the cookie jar too. As you can see, there's a theme here in, in what most of these prices are. Two to three dollars. Sometimes I overpay for things. Um, back here is an anchor hawking, uh, not royal ruby. <laughs> I know, uh, it's, isn't that awful? It just goes in and out of your brain. I wanna say, okay, forest green. And then they made these throughout the 50s. I think they started with this in the late 40s. This is a, this is a, a, a nice one. It's sometimes harder for me to find the uh, pineapple shape. And I'm inserting here photographs to show you that these came in many different colors. Now, the jadeite color and the delphite blue color, they were sprayed on or fired on colors. But the ruby red and the forest green uh, is the actual color of the glass. So you can see there's a variety, pink. I mean, there are even some color fired on colors that I did not include, but that's... Uh, and th th these vases, they're kind of all over the place. You'll see one sell for $2, and then you'll see one sell for $19. So, but I had to pick it up because it's the first uh, its the first one in the pineapple shape that I've been able to get. Uh, blinking at us back there are some pumpkins, and I got all three of them together. They're not marked on the bottom from any particular store. And I don't know if you can see, but the electrical cord on this one is more of a 1970s this is not a modern cord so going with the thought that if someone was going to rewire this they probably wouldn't put a 40 year old electric cord on it as you see there so i am thinking that these are the older guys whether they were homemade or not i'm not sure uh and this one doesn't do anything except hold candy i suppose and then these have their light bulbs on the inside. So, uh, and that one has a, as you can see, a flashing bulb in it. So I might, I actually might put all three of those together because the style of the pumpkins match, the glaze matches, they kind of look good together. Napkin rings made out of Christmas trees. Uh, there are quite a few of these online. These are made out of ceramic as well. Uh, what's these are pretty delicate and none of these stars are broken. There's no broken spots or chipped spots on any of them So if you didn't want to use them as napkin rings, you could be pretty creative and uh, and do something with them at Christmas time So they're currently available in the shop uh, The one the two items here that are not listed in my store for sale are The stars that you see here and the candlestick. I'm just gonna keep that uh, it's a carnival glass candlestick. Doesn't have a whole lot of value to that, but uh, I'm, I'm keeping that. I paid uh, actually 50 cents for this. Well, I'm going to look for a second one. A second one. And then these are, uh, hold on, my mind has drifted again. Glow, uh, hold on, hold on. Let's find it. Where is it? Um, 
Come on. Hold on. It doesn't want to do it. Anyway, there it is. Glow light. Okay. So the glow light company, as you know, made all kinds of nifty plastic Christmas decorations. These stars date to the very early 50s and you would actually take the light bulb off of the socket, put the star on, screw the light bulb through there, and then the star would glow behind the light bulb. So believe it or not, these are very collectible. They're not that easy to get your hands on and they look fat. Come on, I'm trying to focus again. They look fantastic at Christmas time on a vintage string of lights and you'll see, but you'll have to wait until next December. Okay, so those I'm gonna keep a hold of. The lanterns over here are from the 50s or late 40s. That one just sold last night. This one is still available. I did not sell them as a pair because that one has been repainted. It's an old repaint, as you can see. Uh, this one has a shinier uh, original paint finish to it. So I, I just decided to list them separately. And oddly enough, the repainted one sold first. And these are still in perfect working order. <clears throat> There's a wick in there. You could fill it with kerosene or whatever kind of burning fluid you would use and this would light up. But you could also open up the top and let's show you. Hopefully that's not gonna, it's not easy to do with one hand. There we go. Okay, so what you could do with it is take pull the burner out. The burner will just pop right out of there. And you could stick a obviously a votive candle down in there. And it would be really cool at Christmas time out on your front step. So come on. Okay, because I have one hand, I'm not gonna attempt that. But this one is, uh, and this one is still currently for sale in my shop. So I think I got everything except the wedding photo. I'll show you that. Oh, and this, I need help with something. But I'll show you this first. Try, let me get it, okay. Is it not? I think it's focusing. Well, that's about the best I'm gonna be able to do. Vintage wed wedding photos do well, especially when they're beautifully dressed and you get to see the whole wedding party. Alright, that's everything except this that I need some help on. I bought this for one dollar, and I'll tell you what, there's an awful lot that I know nothing about. And when it comes to Asian art, Chinese, Japanese, any type of Asian art, I am clueless. So what I can say is it's a kind of a silk. I have a feeling this isn't showing up very well. I don't know what that means. I'll try to. Okay, I don't know what that means. I do not know what that means. I do know that this piece hasn't been chopped down or cut down because if you look closely at the edges, you'll see that they have a beveled gilded edge. See right there? Okay, if this had been cut for a frame, that we you wouldn't see that. I know my flash is kind of washing it out, but I think you got you saw that. Now the back of it is that sort of classic 1960s kitchen table uh, or formica. Oh, come on. So, because it had that wonderful back, I figured, well, this, this must be a uh, 19, late 50s, 1960s era piece of cardboard that this silk is mounted on. But I know nothing about the art, and what I'm hoping is that it's a $5,000 rare uh, Asian piece of, of silk. 
but it's probably worth 10 cents. Anybody know? Any, can anybody help me on that? I would love it if you could help me on that. So I'm going to back up here and um, I apologize. I think this camera jiggled a lot. I think my lighting was bad. I think I was kind of out of focus. So probably not one of my best videos. So I apologize if it's if anybody got a headache. Okay. Before I go, hold on because I'm going to show you that mystery item that I teased you about. And I said, what is it? What is it? What is it? And then I never told you. So hold on. I'm going to show you that. And then I want to say almost everything you see here is currently available in my eBay shop. I'll put the link to the shop below the in the description. And as always, thanks for your comments. Thanks for watching. If you like the hauls, then comment, subscribe, and thumbs up and all that other kind of thing. And come back again next time. Okay? Stay tuned. It's Scott from the old Curiosity Shop saying thanks for watching and so long for now. Okay, thanks for sticking around to the very last minute. Here is the mystery item that I showed you. It's probably been two or three videos back and I apologize. I sort of forgot about it and someone reminded me. Thank you. I also got chided for my jokes about old ladies in their china closets. No, I'm, I'm kidding. But uh, thank you for reminding me that I didn't show you the mystery item and tell you what it is. So these are the pictures that I took of it. This is the example that I have. My example has some paint loss and there were a couple of bends in the metal. As you can see, a lot of people chimed in and several people, I think, were correct. So we're actually going to go to a photograph now and uh, show you exactly what it was used, was used for. Indeed, it was used to hang uh, cups and saucers or to place saucers inside and then hang little demitasse cups. Uh, as you can see right here in the professional photograph, which, by the way, I shall give credit to. This photograph is taken from Mozzie's Depression Glass. Now, that's a price guide book that's put out by uh, the Schiffer Books for Collectors. That's the fifth edition by Barbara and Jim Mozzie. I think this was probably the last depression guide book I picked up about 10 years ago, 2008. And it's mostly helped to, helps me to identify uh, patterns that I have forgotten about. So giving credit to the photograph and the authors of the book. And there it is. So if you're interested in a, uh, an original uh, 1930s, 40s era Demitasse cup holder, I've got one. Slightly beat up, but it's an original shape and it's going to be for sale in the shop in the next 24 to 48 hours. If you want it, go get it. Thanks for watching, everybody. The link to my shop again is underneath the description box. And as always, it's Scott from the old Curiosity Shop saying happy thrifting and so long for now.